It's disappointing to me that although the title of this hearing implies a much needed discussion, we're likely going to be forced to listen to transphobic bigotry. Because actually, protecting female athletes in Title IX is important. Participating in sports provides so many benefits to our young people. Those benefits range from improved mental and physical health to enriched life skills, such as teamwork and goal setting. In terms of mental health, studies show that participating in youth sports is associated with lower rates of anxiety and depression, lower amounts of stress, higher self-esteem and confidence, and reduced risk of suicide. So why are my Republican colleagues working so hard to prevent our trans youth from participating? According to the Human Rights Campaign, in just the first 143 days of 2023, elected officials across the nation introduced more than 520 anti-LGBTQIA bills in state legislatures. 23 states banned trans youth from participating in school sports consistent with their gender identity, with some laws focusing on kids as young as kindergarten. How competitive is kindergarten? You all are working so hard at excluding and demonizing a bunch of kids. I think it's important that we raise the voices of transgender athletes, their families and teammates. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So I wanna talk about the recent hearing in Congress led by the Oversight Committee and it was a hearing on health and Title IX was brought up. Safety for women was brought up by Riley Gaines, who testified and did a really amazing job. And she said, it's unfortunate that a 23 year old has to go in front of Congress and tell them men and women are different, LOL. It's laughable <laughs> that this is what we're discussing in this day and age, in the age of science and technology and supposedly more knowledge that we're still debating in Congress whether men and women are different. So it appears the Biden administration want to redefine Title IX that was designed to protect girls' sports, that was designed to protect women's sports, to ensure that they have equal opportunities in sports, to ensure that nobody is discriminated against when it comes to competing in sports. But unfortunately, it seems today that everybody is protected except women. They look out for the interests of every other group except girls, except the young women who are left to compete with trans-identified males. Regardless of how it affects their safety, regardless of fairness, regardless of equity, under the guise of inclusion, they are now discriminating against women. This we know. So this was highlighted in various testimonies, especially by Riley Gaines. However, there were some key moments during the hearing, Riley Gaines was accused of being transphobic and her response was perfect. She had a perfect response that the person who accused her of didn't take too kindly. Notice how when somebody is defending women's sports, you're allowed to throw all sorts of insults at them, accuse them of being a bigot, accuse them of all kinds of bigotry. But the moment the person gets back the same energy they put out, they can't handle it. Even though what they're doing is putting female athletes at risk in all sorts of ways, physically, in the locker room, mentally, emotionally, they're putting them at risk and they're excluding female athletes too. Many of which no longer compete in the sport that they love, that they've worked hard in because they don't want to have to compete with males. Their concerns get ignored. We've heard about this over and over again. So Riley brought up Peyton Manning, the young lady who was injured in volleyball by a trans-identified male who hit the, the ball so hard, they knocked her out cold. Until this day, I hate to say it, she is still dealing with the repercussions of that. She's still dealing with injury. She's still dealing with memory issues. Not to mention the fact that it ended her career. Unfortunately, Thomas was not a one-off. Across the country and in various sports, Males are entering women's athletic competitions, being given spots on women's teams, and being granted entry to our locker rooms. There are numerous documented instances of males competing not just in women's swimming, but also in women's track, cross country, basketball, volleyball, field hockey, and other sports at all levels of competition. This issue is incredibly underreported for various reasons. But common sense Americans know intuitively that this is not fair to women. 
And science, of course, supports that instinct. In fact, studies consistently show males have about a 10 to 12% athletic advantage over females. This gap is evident in almost every sport and at every level of competition. Yes, hormone therapy can narrow this gap, but it cannot close it. And studies consistently demonstrate that surgery and testosterone suppression do not reduce male athletic performance to normal female levels. Take Thomas, for example. He was mediocre against the men at best, ranking 400s and 500s nationally, then dominating all of the women in the entire country by body lengths, might I add, in a matter of a year. Not only do women have to worry about losing opportunities and being exploited in locker rooms, allowing men into women's sports also puts girls at greater risk of injury. In September of last year, North Carolina high school volleyball player Peyton McNabb suffered serious injury after a trans-identified male player spiked a ball at her head, rendering her unconscious. Peyton experienced extensive trauma to her head and neck and long-term concussion symptoms. Still to this day, a year and three-ish months later, she is still partially paralyzed on her right side. Her vision is impaired, her memory is impaired, and she isn't playing college sports like she had dreamed of for herself. Just a few weeks ago in Massachusetts, a male player on the Swamp Scott High School field hockey women's team injured an opposing player with a shot to the face, sending the female athlete to the hospital with significant facial and dental injuries. Injuries, of course, can and do happen when females are playing against other females, but allowing men to play women's sports increases the likelihood and severity of such injuries. That's one of the reasons why, for 50 years, Federal Title IX regulations have allowed schools to offer separate teams for women and men when the sports are contact sports or involve competitive skill. In April of 2023, the Department of Education proposed a rule that, if adopted, would reverse this presumption. Under the proposed rule, women's sports aren't just for women. They're for anyone who simply says they are a woman, unless a particular school can demonstrate to the satisfaction of the Department of Education that, can, that keeping a particular team female meets important educational objectives. The new rule mandates that every school in the country must demonstrate the unfairness of male participation on each specific women's team that they offer and develop rules that minimize harm to trans-identified athletes. But what about the harm to us? Who is working to minimize the harm done to female athletes? So a male can take part in sports and end a woman's career, but yet we're still talking about how not allowing them to compete in women's sports, making sure that they compete in the correct category, excludes them, excludes the males, excludes and, you know, hinders them in sports. We're still talking about that. We're still talking about the so-called needs of the males and ignoring the fact that women have been injured. Women have had their careers ruined because who comes first? The trans identified person, they come first. So if this isn't misogyny in a dress, misogyny wearing lipstick, I don't know what is. So the first classic moment of the hearing was Riley Gaines, a 23-year-old Riley Gaines, barely out of college, owning a congresswoman, a Democrat, who called her transphobic for defending women's sports, for telling her story as a female athlete, for simply saying what she and her colleagues went through having to compete against Leah Thomas. She was called transphobic. And this is a lesson for all of us. This is how you respond to these ridiculous accusations made against you just for standing up for women, just for standing up for young girls who are being subjected to this without their consent, may I add. Such as teamwork and goal setting. In terms of mental health, studies show that participating in youth sports is associated with lower rates of anxiety and depression, lower amounts of stress, higher self-esteem and confidence. Women must stop. Inclusion cannot be prioritized over safety and fairness. And Ranking Member Lee, if my tes testimony makes me transphobic, then I believe your opening monologue makes you a misogynist. Thank you. I now, thank you, uh, Ms. Gaines. I now recognize Ms. Perry for her opening statements. Good afternoon, Chairman McLean, Ranking Member Lee, and distinguished members of the subcommittee. My name is Sarah Parshall Perry. I am a senior legal fellow at the Heritage Foundation. As a former varsity athlete, the mother of a girls varsity athlete, and former senior counsel for civil rights at the Department of Education, I have, as the saying goes... Uh, Madam Chair, name. excuse me, I move to have uh, the gentlewoman's words taken down. The committee will suspend.
Madam Chair, she's engaging in personalities. Can I just ask how it's fair to be called transphobic? There's a thing. I would say men disguising themselves as women are engaging in personalities. Order. Yeah. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Order, order. Let's let's get a ruling. The chair. Okay, I move to withdraw the point of order. Thank you, Ms. Lee. Um, I now recognize Ms. Perry for her opening statement. We can start over. Thank you. Chairwoman McLean, Ranking Member Lee. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. She couldn't handle being called a misogynist. She couldn't handle it, but she had no problem calling Riley uh, a transphobe transphobic. She had no problem hurling that accusation at her, hurling that insult at her, simply for standing up for women's sports. Again, as a female athlete who has been through it, she got called transphobic. So when she's met with the same energy, she can't handle it. And she wants that struck off from the testimony or whatever. She wants those words removed. But you had no problem issuing labels on women who stand up for their sports. You've got no problem doing that. You take the side of the males, apparently, men who want to essentially replace women. You're taking their side. You're standing up for them and talking about how important sports is for them, which I cannot stand. When did anybody say that if you happen to be transgender you shouldn't be able to participate in sports when did any of us say that all we ever say is that they need to be in the correct category all we ever say is that they are male they have the strength of a man they are built differently from us women we've seen the evidence we don't need to go over it over and over again or well, apparently we do it doesn't matter how much estrogen synthetic hormones they take, they still have the advantage over the women. Therefore, their participation in women's sports makes women's sports unfair towards females. It's very simple. When did we say that they can't participate or they should not be allowed to participate and enjoy all the benefits of participating in sports? We've created third categories to accommodate them. We've changed our language to accommodate them rather than just straight up saying this is men competing against women which we know isn't right because we have categories in sports from the very beginning we've never had men competing with women unless it's mixed doubles or whatever in tennis but we don't typically have males competing against females in sports because that's unfair and this democrat wants us to look out for the interests of the males at the expense of the females, at the expense of the women's safety. We've talked about things that have happened. This isn't hypothetical. This has happened. Women have been injured, some permanently. Women have had their careers ended. So if you're saying that that's okay, as long as the males can identify as women and compete in women's sports and not be hindered in any way in doing so, you're saying that's okay. You're all for that as another woman. So yes, if she wants to call you misogynistic, just like you called her transphobic, then she has every right to do that. But you can't take it. You can dish it out, but you can't take it, clearly. The rules differ depending on which side you, you fall on. Absolutely ridiculous, and I'm sick of the double standard. I really am. People have lost their jobs. People have been suspended. Have lost their careers over this because they've hurt people's feelings simply by stating facts. But yet, when it comes to criticizing people on the left and calling them out for how they are basically treading all over women, they can't handle it and they want to be treated differently.
So good on Riley. That was the perfect response. Anytime you are called transphobic for standing up for women's sports, respond by calling that person a misogynist. You're against women then. I don't care if you're a woman yourself. You are against women. If you're okay with this, you could sit there and hear about young girls who did not consent having to be in a locker room with a guy showing his penis. If you can be okay with that, then you are against women. If you don't have any sympathy towards those young ladies, then I'm sorry, you're not for women. The interests of trans-identified males and women, they conflict. They conflict with each other. You can't be on the fence about this. You can't use this to virtue signal when the safety of women, when the safety of our young girls is at stake. So let's get into the next epic part of this whole thing. AOC, she was sat right there. And this is what she had to say. This was her contribution. So squad rep Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez claimed that all underage women will face genital examinations if biological men are barred from women's sports. Ocasio-Cortez made her claim during the Tuesday House Oversight Subcommittee on Health Hearing featuring NCAA swimming legend and women's sports advocate Riley Gaines. The New York Democrat said that there were several proposals looking to marginalise transgender Americans before claiming during her questioning that women would have to get their parts checked if someone disbelieves their stated gender. So who's going to tell her? Somebody did. <laughs> Let's take a look. Now, I've spent a um, decent amount of my time here in Congress sitting through panels and hearings of men attempting to restrict the rights of women and telling us that it's for our own good. Um, but I want to dive a little bit more deeply into why this issue with targeting trans women in sports is particularly problematic, not just for trans girls, but for all of us. We're here today because there's a proposal here, and there are several proposals here, uh, to further marginalize trans women in sports. And I think about this all the time because trans people in the United States doesn't even exceed 1% of our population, and yet there's so many resources and energy and time dedicated to figuring out how we can more finely exclude them um, from our sports. And I thought, why, why? Why so much effort and dedication on such a tiny portion of the U.S. population when there virtually is no major issue that is, um, that is precipitating? And I started to realize that a lot of these proposals here um, involve invasion of privacy of all women. Ms. Goss Graves, can you tell us a little bit about what sex testing looks like for youth in states with trans athletic bans? It's terrible. Uh, in some states, any individual could challenge whether someone is a girl enough to play. In some states, it requires actual a genital verification, which is shocking. Mm -hmm. um, and there aren't it's not as if they're... Uh, and let me just stop you right there. You said there are some proposals. I mean, we've seen this in Ohio. There was a proposed ban on trans athletes that originally allowed for genital examinations on minors in order to, quote, unquote, protect women. Is that correct? Unfortunately, yes. And so we're seeing here in this guise, under the guise of not only trying to further marginalize trans women and girls, we are talking about opening up all women and girls to genital examinations when they are under age. That's right. Potentially just because someone can point to someone and say, I don't think you're a girl. That's correct. And we're saying this in an environment of a post Dobbs America where states are criminalizing access to abortion and want nothing more than data on women to figure out when, who's getting a menstrual cycle, who doesn't have one. And we're supposed to believe that this is gonna make us better and safer. 
I think not. And per usual, I don't believe we're sitting here in a panel of men that has actually thought of about the biology and privacy consequences of all women, trans or cisgender, here. Ms. Gossgraves, in addition to that, are there certain groups more likely to face discrimination under these bans? When well, it comes to, and what, and what you were speaking to, particularly when it comes to black women and girls? Absolutely insane. And of course, she's making it a racial issue now. She could throw it all in there. This is nothing. This woman just embarrassed herself in Congress, bringing this ridiculous testimony. But let's just call it what it is. You don't want to be called a misogynist. So this is somebody who clearly is advocating against women, but still wants to hold on to their feminist label. So they're bringing in, you know, abortion. They're bringing in forced <laughs> examinations because we don't know if you're a woman. This is what this leads to. If you're against biological men in women's sports, well, you must be all for this. This is what they do. All this hyperbole, all of these ridiculous far-fetched scenarios. When have we ever doubted that somebody is trans? In all of the examples of males competing in women's sports, when have we ever doubted whether somebody was, was male? When have we ever doubted that? In all of the cases we've seen, all of the examples, it's been pretty obvious. It's been pretty obvious when they're beating the competition by seconds in a sprint when they're lapping the women when they are beating the women by five minutes and waiting on the finish line by themselves when they're always winning the competition taking home the gold and the silver if there's two of them as we see in the cycling in chicago in most of these cases these people are still fully intact and I think most of us are pretty clear on the differences between a penis and a vagina. I think most of us are pretty clear on a natural born genitalia and one that has been, you know, done by a so-called doctor. I think mutilation is pretty obvious. Speak to people who have been through bottom surgery and are not happy with the results. Speak to those people, and that's an understatement to say they're not happy. I mean, who basically feel, and they have, that they have been violated. So I think it would be pretty obvious if somebody has gone through the surgery even. We don't need to examine anybody. They want to portray red states, states that stand up for women's sports, as some barbaric run system who's going to be basically forcing women to, to get checked. That's, that's what they're doing here. They're trying to disparage Republicans, basically. They're trying to disparage conservatives who are simply standing up for fairness in sports. So no, you can't be an advocate for women and be for biological males in women's sports. You cannot, no matter how much you try. Don't try and throw in marginalized groups such as black women. So Ocasio-Cortez's claims comes almost a year after the Ohio State Senate removed a controversial provision from a state house proposal barring biological men from competing against women, which would have required internal and external exams to confirm a student athlete's gender. Ohio Senate Republicans replaced the provision with a requirement for student athletes whose gender is in question to present a copy of the participant's original birth certificate to compete that solves that problem. I'm not sure why that's in the bill. It's unnecessary. State Senate President Matt Huffman said about the genital inspection provision in June 2022. All of these tests can be done with a simple DNA swab, Huffman added. Tuesday's hearing saw fireworks from the get-go as Gaines, an outspoken advocate for keeping women's sports limited to biological women, Fired back at Ocasio Cortez, fellow squad mate, Rep Summer Lee. So there you go. So stop this nonsense. Somebody, you know, proposed something that was unnecessary, and you're taking that and trying to attribute that to all red states, to all Republicans. 
and actually act as if that is something that is going to be brought into fruition or something that people are advocating for. It's just simply not true. And again, why would people opt for that when you can do a simple DNA swab, when you can look at somebody's original birth certificate, ask somebody to provide ID. And like I said, 99.9% .9 of the time, it's pretty obvious <laughs> when somebody is male, especially when with a lot of these athletes, they don't even do the surgery. It's not required. A lot of the time, all they need is to declare that they consider themselves a woman. Their word <laughs> is honored to that extent. In contrast to the women who speak out and give an account of what they've been through, their words are ignored. And you know why they're ignored? Because of the likes of AOC and Rep Summer Lee. Women in Congress who are all for the destruction of women's sports. So let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves and God willing, I will see you in the next video.